Hi guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today's video is going to be a video about paying respect to a tool that is and should be considered as one of the very old horses when it comes to dealing with 3D. It is a tool that you probably have never heard about before. It is also a tool that maybe you have maybe slightly seen in one of the your, your searches about very old existing 3D tools before the era of Maya and all that. And I'm talking to you about a tool that I once tried to use earlier in my days when I started using 3D, okay? And I found this tool sometime in the year 2004. So it is a very, very old tool. I'm talking about no other tool that has refused to die. A tool that has refused to uh, stay on the ground. A tool that has refused to stay buried. I'm talking about a tool called the Invis ac 3d and the invis ac 3d is one of those tools that once you get your hands on with it you would find the very big differences between this tool and every other tool that you have been making use of way back when you started earlier it is a very simple and easy to use tool that was how it was built and it was made for people that was either trying to get into 3d from the 2d point of view or people that want to transition from doing some very menial to uh, 3d jobs or uh, from very some very menial 3d to using maya so it is more like a bridge for two different people okay so we're going to jump into the website so you can have a look so if you go over to invis.com you would find the amazing site okay it has refused to die for some reasons i don't know why it has just refused to die so you're going to see the whole thing that has to do with the feature we'll talk about the buy later so you can see why i am actually chuckling while i'm talking about this video the features that the video has include extrude subdivide do your default boolean bridge well all of those fun stuffs you can go over and see them for yourself and because this app was updated over and over as at the year 2004 when i started using this app or the time i came across this app before i moved on to various apps and you know moved far away from it it was this okay so you can see for yourself all right it was making use of uh this was a system requirement at that point so you can see how old this tool is it was the system requirement of, at that point there are things i still miss about this app and it includes the exporting options that the app provides i'll still talk about some other tools and features that exist inside the app which i really really wish the 3d apps of today have support for so let's jump right into this app and see how it works by default once you open this app especially if you're using 3d studio max or maybe you're using maya you would on you would see that the viewport looks alike especially 3d studio max this viewport looks alike for you to navigate around the viewports you need to simply understand how maya shortcut keys work which is more of an industry standard so you hold down the alt with your left mouse button you can orbit with the alt and your right mouse button you can zoom in and zoom out or pull and push in and push out with your alt and your middle mouse button you can pan for you to actually scale this you can use any of these buttons here but the space bar that exists in maya still exists directly here so you see why i said it's a movement okay it is a movement now the next thing which you want to do is you want to create objects we all like creating objects don't we now i'm going to simply come through click and use the default ninja styled 3d studio max mode of creating objects to create objects you can notice by default that this does not create based of the grid if you want to create something based of the grid you need to first of all switch to the viewport and then you need to create based of that viewport that you want you cannot just create things based off the grid like that you need to be in the viewport then you can create based off the view that you can see within the 3d here you would also notice that my selection looks more like a graphic selection graphic selection i mean that once you're selecting things like an image or let's say you're selecting like a tool to a text object yeah this is how it looks like so you can see that i have all of these nodes that we use by default to make our scale okay so if you're coming from photoshop from any vector design program you would notice that every vector or graphic transformers have this stuff that you you can see by the edge you can see all of these nodes that you can use to scale all right and then you can see this particular one that you can use 
to move your object around and that is how it works so automatically that tells you that we don't have a tool for skill so there is no tool for skill there is only a tool for move which com uh, comprises of scaling and if you want to scale to the center you need to hold down control okay so you need to hold down control so you can scale to the center to rotate your object you have to activate the rotate tool okay you have to activate the rotate tool and your object rotates based off the particular point at which you are viewing them so if you are in this point you have to rotate based off that point if you're looking from this point you have to rotate based off that point it is actually more like art everybody sees things from the point where they stand all right so i'm going to go ahead and clean up this view so that we can have something nice to work with if you want to create an object that has volume for example you can create this object in two forms you can choose to create the object or you can choose to simply use a plane or maybe drag or, or use the polygon tool to draw the object out okay so you can choose to draw this object out so if you've used maya before you probably have seen this tool and then you can come through and use the extrude which is right here to extrude this tool also the extrude works in a very similar way just like the object creation for you to extrude the tool to a given point you can choose to either jump over to that point where this tool exists in space and extrude based off that point so i'm going to select and then come through and extrude based off this point so you can see how old this tool is and you can see how uh, frustrating it was for artists to actually get their jobs done. Now, while we're talking about this tool, I would like to share some tips and some things that I miss about this tool. I miss the fact that this tool doesn't exist and the development did not continue. I also miss the fact that it has a lot of tools that are here or it has a couple of tools that are here that did not make it to other apps. Instead, they made themselves to other apps as plugins. One of the first ones which I would like to talk about is the, the tool that has to do with Gribble. You will notice that Gribble in most of the DCC apps that we use today, they come in as plugins. But now instead of that to happen, you can simply go over to tool and Gribble. Of course, once you drag this here, you can do all of the settings you want for your Gribble and simply create Gribble and automatically you can have a Gribble. This Gribble changes over time. Another thing that you would really miss if you ever use this app or if you want to go back and pay homage to this app is that there is no outliner. There is definitely nothing like an outliner. So you cannot really do all of the outlining stuff. And you might also notice that to every point or to every space or to every shape or every face that you select, it creates a gribble based off that point. Now, this brings me to your component selection. When you're making use of a tool like this, there is no edge selection. You only have a face and you only have a point, which is a bit frustrating if you are using a very modern day spoiled apps. If you are using these apps earlier in the years, this was amazing because at this point, for you to actually split across this, you have to come through and just simply click on divide the loop. It will automatically divide the loop for you. If you want to divide this section, you can come over to this part where we have the surface and then you can choose to divide this particular surface. So if you click on divide, you can see it subdivides that part for you and then you can do that here as well. You can also find out that we have a couple of things that you can play with once you're working with this tool. I will start off by saying that this might not be the best tool for you to actually start using because this is a very old tool. I'm actually making this video because of nostalgic sake and to pay homage to the tool because I use it at the point in time and I think a couple of people never knew this tool existed, especially the guys that just started off using 3D Studio Max and all that. And does it matter? Of course it doesn't matter, but then I think it is worth it for you to understand that there are tools like this that exist and you can go around and play with it. Who knows, it might just come in handy whenever you're working in, in maybe a game or something like that. Another thing about this tool that I miss is that when you go over to the project setting, you have something called the poly maker. This poly maker is a tool that you can make use of to create very interesting shapes. So if I come over here and go over to, uh, let's say, the tetra and decide to create a tetrahedron or maybe something like this and hit on create you can see i have a very interesting shape okay you can see 
I have a very interesting shape. And these shapes are born out of mathematical algorithms, all right? These shapes, all of them, they are all born out of mathematical algorithms. So if I uh, click on one and select again, you can see we have something like this. And I so really wish that most of these apps, they have them. But some of them, you definitely need a lot of modifiers or you need a couple of plugins for you to be able to create very interesting shapes like this. We have some of these things in Maya as well, but then you have to go around and play with them for you to be able to discover what they do. Moving on, you can find some very interesting stuff as well that you can play with once you start making use of this app. So I don't really think that a lot of people will go through and, you know, use this app but i think if you want to you know see what it felt like when working in like the early 90s or like in the early 2000s then maybe you can go ahead and find all of them uh lying around here you can go through play with the app and tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section this is something i really really would like a lot of people to just get their hands on especially if you're into creating stuff like this or maybe you like creating uh, very geometrical designs this automatically will get your job done a bit more faster especially if you're into things like this and just in case you were wondering the subdivision here was uh, at that point was pretty amazing okay so i'll show you how the subdivision worked you have to first of all you know let's let's use something that has a segment you have to first of all select the object you want and then you can subdivide by hitting the sub d all right now to every object that you have here why i said it's quite similar or it's a good transition for people coming from you know uh, 3d i mean uh, 2d to 3d or wants to use maya is that to each object you have selected they have their own menu sub their own menus that is selected okay so if you select vertices the vertice menu is active if you select face the surface menu is selected if you select object the object menu is selected and within this you can come through and see the available things that you can find within the uh within the object level so you can also come through and do your subdivide you can still come through do your mirroring you can do your boolean all of these things exist and you know you can go ahead and play with it if you select the surface you can come through and bevel the entire surface so for the beveling this is what you get you get an object like this and you get a menu like this and you can enter details of what you want and go ahead and hit the bevel and you can see automatically it bevels this stuff the same thing happens with the extrude the extrude is a bit funny because you can extrude by distance or you can extrude by normal and extruding by normal simply means that these extruded these objects that we just beveled is going to extrude based off the normal that exists here and we can select the distance and say the distance of one and you can see we're having a much more interesting object so let's turn the subdivision all the way off and you know you can come through and turn the subdivision down okay so let's just go and do that one more time these are very interesting and funny things that you can find here and before i tell you something else you can go ahead and make your segments so for your segments you need to make sure that the segments are all turned up before you can you know commit to working with this tool if your segments are not turned up and you decide to you know commit to this tool it will disappear and that simply means you would not be able to play with this tool as much as you want you cannot add extra you cannot go ahead and add extra uh, loops for you to add extra loops it simply means that you have to come through and do exactly what we did earlier which is coming through and selecting the entire face and going over to the surface and dividing that particular surface this is how you can add it and you can see we have uh things like this facets like this happening and before we actually go there let us also talk about why i said it is an old horse it is an old horse in the sense that it is very old and also it has chosen not to die in has chosen not to die because this app is still in purchase okay it is still in purchase that means that the app still goes for 150 dollars for one particular seat 
I don't know how insane this is, but if this is not doggedness, I don't know what is. And you can see it has all of these seats that you can get for a subsidized amount. If you're buying five, you're going to get it at $90. I don't know why it is still existing. I think some companies should just come buy this app off or maybe they should sell themselves to something else. They can sell themselves over to Silo or maybe to some other apps like Wing 3D. I think if the engineers that, creates this, uh, that created this app and the guys that created Wing 3D, if they can sit together, they can make something better and it's funny to also see that they are still updating the website regardless of the fact that the app is still old and I don't know how many people still uses this but for this price to still stay here and it's not yet free it simply means that there's somebody out there that is using this app and I don't know if it is you and if it is you I would really say thank you for keeping these guys still in business I would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section below and if you like this video simply give it a like and if you're new here it would be amazing if you can hit the subscribe button and also you know share with your friends and turn on notification and all of that fun stuff and until i see you guys again with a review app updates tips and tricks tutorials free friday stuffs things like this peace